Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. What would you say if you could get half the heat you require for your home for free? This week, we're talking about how you harvest the passive solar energy that's streaming through your windows every day. Emily Karen is the principal at Eco Synergy and a high performance housing consultant. We went to the Belgravia Green Net Zero House to explore how passive solar energy works with thermal mass and good design. Well, obviously we have a self-facing uh, front. Uh, the massive windows here can cover a pretty big uh, part of the um, heat demand of the house just because of the size of them. Um, the overhang that was put over the windows was also calculated to shade in the summer because in the summer we don't want that heat. We, want just, we don't want it if we can, but we will get a little bit of it, unfortunately. And in the winter, because the sun's a lot lower, then we want all that solar gain to come in the house and keep our environment warm. The big, high-quality, south-facing windows in this net-zero home provide 50% of the heating needs of the home. The right-sized overhangs mean you get sun in the winter when you want it, and shade in the summer when you don't want the heat. And those windows in the Belgravia Green Net Zero House are big performers. Karen has a trick to find out how many panes a window has. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to find out the amount of panes that you have in the window just by using your lighter or flashlight. So by putting the lighter close to the window pane, you can see how many reflections you have in the windows. So in this case, we have a triple pane window with triple low E coating. And these coatings are what determine the amount of solar heat gain versus the amount of heat losses in that window. If you get the design principles right, you get a far more comfortable home. Passive solar is more than simply providing a spot for relaxing little cat naps in a sunbeam. Well, for example, people that came to this house and others, um, they were always asking if we were on a radiant floor heating system, and we said no, we told them that we weren't. Um, the reflex is because we have a warm concrete floor, we assume that there's heat going through it, through a means of mechanical system. In this case, we don't have to. If the floor feels warm, you don't need slippers, uh, just because it absorbed the radiation from that day. Unfortunately, most of today's homes and neighborhoods are not designed to take advantage of the free energy that the sun provides. Most houses are designed orientation to lots, so mainly for views or you have a lot of walkout basements facing like a pond or something. But uh, I don't believe that the houses that are designed today are designed considering passive solar. This house gets half of its heat from passive solar energy streaming through the windows. But it's not just the amazing triple glazed windows working on their own. The window overhangs and the thermal mass of the concrete floor are invisible partners in passive solar heating. Depending on the season, so in the summer the, sun, the sun's really, really high. And because of the awnings that we've put, we shade this bigger part of the floor. And so sun comes in about a foot and a half inside, which is good because you don't want to have excess heat during the summer. And then in the winter, as the sun goes down, the, the amount of the surface of this floor will become more and more lit and the light will get deeper in the house, maybe four to five feet within the living space. And the more mass is ex that is exposed to the radiation, the, the more it can store that heat energy. The concrete floor acts like a big heat battery, storing the heat from the sun and slowly releasing it once the sun goes down and the temperature drops. Like cookies and milk, passive solar and thermal mass work very well together. Thermal massing is uh, usually what we see passive solar um, married with, if I, if I can put it that way, just because the thermal mass allows to um, benefit from that heat once the sun is gone. Good passive solar design is not rocket science, but it does require planning and forethought since passive solar heating is affected by lot orientation, the efficiency of windows, use of thermal mass and overhangs, and even the placement and species of trees in your yard. Check out our blog for more information on how you can make passive solar and thermal mass work either in your existing home or for a new build. We've also got photos, a podcast, and links to great resources at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.